Get Heavy Podcast, hosted by Craig Pensales. Fantastical. How's it, how's it out there in the fucking Colorado land? It's cold as hell right now. Yeah. Getting a, yeah, I'm getting an Arctic blast. <laughs> yeah, I bet, dude. Yeah, we are here, too, actually. I mean, it's not the Good. same. Ours is 58 to 60. Yours is nice. 30. Yeah. Yeah. I just out there about a month ago. I was out in Denver and oh, it, it, it was nice, man. It was beautiful. And then the like one of the last days we actually got to go out and run around in the mountains. It was nice and snowy and wet and cold and shitty. And for us, that's like a cool thing. Like we don't get that. So yeah, it was a good yeah. time. Yeah, it's like uh, 15 degrees out right now or something like that. Yeah, yeah no, I'm good. I remember, yeah. um, <laughs> dude. I remember yeah. fucking the first I, the first time we came through and 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 stayed with you guys. You guys were living in that fucking crazy <laughs> like brick warehouse, man. Yeah, and it wasn't even winter yet. It was like fall, but these guys are such savages. They're like sleeping so in cool, parkas, man. dude. <laughs> I don't even think you had windows on part of it. Was am I wrong there? The well, the windows were like barely in there, and there was yeah. like. You could feel the wind go right through the walls, you know. Oh, that's yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, yeah. I couldn't. Fight. We were like, you know, beach assholes. Like, you know, our winter is literally fifty-eight degrees. We're like, oh, I don't know, sweatshirt weather. Yeah. You know, these guys are like, <laughs> these guys had like zero fucking degree blankets and fucking they're living like savages, dude. I mean, the yeah, place was, was rad, rad, but you know, that's crazy. Yeah, Obviously, was, you've you've moved right. up was, from there. It was pretty rough. Yeah, rough it's back awesome. in the days, dude. But how cheap was that yeah. rent back then? Oh man, I think we paid like one hundred and fifty-five dollars a month each. Right. Yeah, it was, it was the whole band, damn, man. Fucking yeah. awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, my my electrical bill was two hundred and fifty bucks last month. Right. <laughs> yeah. Brutal, dude. So, what are you doing? Uh, what are you doing for work? Are, I mean, I know you're. Are you still building pedals and shit? Yeah, I do that. Like, that's not uh, yeah, full time. Yeah, by any means, but. Uh, I do that and I've been fixing pedals for a local guitar shop. Okay. And this, so they've been sending me a lot of people. Nice, man. And then uh, I've been painting houses lately. Okay. Um, and bartending. Nice. Nice. Yeah. How is bar bar still around? It is. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Awesome, man. Fuck. Yeah. I haven't, I haven't been in there in man, hell of a long time. Oh, but, really? It's not, the, it's yeah. not one of the spots anymore. I don't really go out anywhere, really. Yeah, you know, I, I go so. to work at the bar, and then uh, this place called the Skylark, <clears throat> and then um, that's about it. Yeah, I haven't been out really. What kind of well? What's COVID, the Skylark right? like? The Skylark's pretty cool. It used to be, uh, it just reopened under new ownership, but it used to be like a rockabilly kind of hangout. It was like covered in all kinds of like pinup girl, you know pictures and shit like that and like they had a, call, a lot of cool old pool tables but um the new owners like cleaned it up a little bit and it's gonna be like a, a music venue upstairs and okay. uh it's pretty nice man it's got a nice bar <clears throat> big yeah. wooden bar yeah nothing that, uh, not, nothing like a good bar man i know man. i fucking well, love bars so many i remember like i was I, I brought up bar bar because when we had played there i think it was on a wrath i was doing double duty i was doing wrath and ox and we played at Bar Bar, dude, and, and it was like was it awesome. must have been the spot back then. And this is ten, yeah, fucking over ten years ago now, right? But I remember yeah. walking in, and the fucking owner handed me two pitchers of beer, and I was like, "Cool, dude, like it's for the band." He's all, "Nope, that's for you." And I'm like, yeah. "Are you fucking serious?" <laughs> He's all, yeah. "Yeah, man, just let me know if you can need more." He handed every single person in the band two pitchers of beer, and it's. The mile high city right so everybody it, was fucked up fucking, halfway through the hammer, first one you know you guys are used to it but we're fucking hammered the elevation, dude. Totally yeah, elevation fucks, you. fucks yeah. you up dude and then at one point we were playing and the fucking owner of the bar or whoever the head bartender was jumped off his own bar into the crowd and like fucking like was getting lifted around you know like did a stage dive off, the, off his own <laughs> bar dude it was so <laughs> brutal man yeah i mean it, it was an awesome time yeah man. it sounds like a good spot <laughs> yeah and that was, that the, was night. the spot that was the night that I got pissed on by Maddie, our drummer. Did you ever hear about that one? <laughs> you didn't hear about the piss on this piss story, dude. I, I think I might've heard. Maybe. About yeah. That one. It's been anyway, a while, but 
I'd like to hear it, hear it again. Yeah, so. yeah, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> we were so bummed because we had to leave that night. We were going to Omaha or something the next day, right? We had okay. to fucking, we had to literally leave from there and fucking start driving, right? So we're doing that night uh, drive, right, right. Okay. and we are hammered. I mean, every except for Nick, who doesn't drink, who's you know, fucking hammered, dude. And uh, the way we had it was we had a bunk. And then uh, all the gear, a bunch of shit under the bunk. And then there was all these like bench seats, you know what I mean? And we had them flipped around so you could sit like in a, in a common area. So I'm yeah. sleeping on the was, bench. You guys have a, was that a Dodge van? Yeah, it was a Dodge. Uh, it was the yeah. Vanimal, the Vanimal. Yeah. Right. So we have the, um, I'm sleeping on the bench that's below the bunk. Right. And all of a sudden it's like, fuck, four, three, four in the morning. Right. And I feel like some warm shit on my leg, dude. And I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> I just start, you know, I start waking up and I'm hammered, you know, and I see Maddie, like our drummer, he has his dick out, dude, and he's dead asleep, but he's pissing, like straight pissing on me, dude, like, like, oh God. like just <laughs> pissing on me, dude, and so I wake up That's in so like funny. a rage, and I've, I, I think I had had it with him at that point, you know, we were like, two three weeks in and i start just punching the fuck out of him dude you know what i mean I, and i'm just beating him and he's pissing on me and he has no idea why i'm punching him you know what i mean like and so and then at one point i went and grabbed the fucking door i was gonna throw him out of the van like i literally was like i was out of my mind you know and i think the only thing that stopped me was the fact that he really had no idea what he was doing you know what i mean like he had no fucking clue why he was pissed so or funny. like why i was beating the fuck out of him and then he didn't remember it at all the next day right so he gets up <laughs> he's like what's up craig you know all happy fucking and i'm just i'm steaming dude like and finally everyone in the band was like dude you you fucking pissed on him last night and he's like oh my god and he's like the nicest dude but when he gets wasted we call him critter and uh man he fucking he ended up you know it's like he did my laundry fucking bought me breakfast you know the whole deal and it was fine after that but yeah that was uh denver that's what does that's what it does that's so funny yeah god damn it yeah man it was wild so that was a good show though yeah so how many did what's what's your go-to i got pissed on story all mine involve hookers and drugs and shit so (laughs) i don't you know uh, not too much on the road band pissing on me stuff no, I never got pissed on by anybody, but um You're missing out, one, bro. <laughs> <laughs> one time uh when we were recording and we were in Lincoln, Nebraska, staying at our friend Theron's house. Mm. He he had these dudes come in, they were on tour, come stay at the house after their show, and um we got in late and they were already passed out. And so we were like, you know hanging out smoking weed making pizzas or something Mm -hmm. and we heard somebody go like dude 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 you're totally pissing in my footwear (laughs) one of those dudes got up and started pissing in somebody's shoes you're pissing in my footwear dude 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 you're totally pissing in my footwear yeah man but you guys also i mean (laughs) yeah you guys uh it must have been planes. I, I would assume stayed at the house in Montavo, right? Or maybe it was it wasn't planes, but you guys gave Neil his fucking tattoo in our apartment. Do you guys remember? Do you remember that? Or was it Neil? I'm pretty sure it was Neil. We were ha- we were all hammered, dude. But what's up, guys? We interrupt this podcast to let you know that we would love, 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 love for you to if you follow this page. If you follow this podcast, please remember to like, rate, subscribe, comment, review, however you want to do it on iTunes, on Spotify, hit that notifications bell on the YouTube page. Um, It really does help uh, push that stuff forward. I appreciate everyone that supported us so far. Also, check out the merchandise, laughjunkies.com. Look for Get Heavy Podcast. There's a link in the description of this podcast and every podcast we do. We got a bunch of new merch, sweatshirts, sweatpants, uh, active shorts. We got the new Think and Destroy line that has uh, just dropped. We got a few new images that are going to be getting uploaded here uh, soon. Made quick to order, shipped straight to your house. Super fucking simple. I really appreciate everyone that supported us on that. Also, my band Tongue is finally getting back into the swing of things. COVID is wrapping up, hopefully. And now we have a bunch of shows in March. So starting on October 4th, a Midnight Society production. Um, we got the OPAC, Oxnard Performing Arts Center here. Dr. No, 
pink mist, tongue, brain vat, old blood, and dye healing. $10 at the door, all ages. Come check that out. March 18th, we have a show out there in uh, Palmdale, California, the Transplants Brewing Company with Sasquatch, High Desert Queen, and Gray Moth. And uh, also, we'll be playing as well. So check that out. And then last but not least, Glowing Brain Podcast Alumni, Oakland fucking Rippers. They're coming through to Ventura at Gigi's Cocktail Lounge on March 24th. Go ahead and fucking come on out to that. It's 21 plus, $10 at the door. We're really, really excited to start playing again. And I appreciate the support and enjoy the rest of the episode. But his, uh, his, his, uh, you know, the little tattoo. Yes. That you guys all have, yeah. right? You have it. FTW. Sure, right? Yeah, the FTW, right? Yeah. Oh, so classic. what they did, like, it, it must have been Neil. Were you there? It, yeah, you had, to have, been, you had yeah. to have been there. Yeah. Yeah. And so uh, their bass player, <clears throat> I think he was the newest addition and everyone has to get an FTW and it's small, but they, I mean, literally like we're hammered. It's like two in the morning and they're like, it's time motherfucker. You know, and he's like, <laughs> and he's like a real mellow, like dude, you know, I'm sure somebody else got some that night too, though. I think there was a, someone else. What did you get yours that night? No, you must've, I don't know. No, I got mine a while before a that, while before that. Yeah. And uh, anyway, he was not stoked on it, but they literally like took a razor blade out and fucking carved it into his arm. And oh, then shit. they took cigarette ash and fucking mashed it up in some water and rubbed it into his fucking. <laughs> it's like cigarette it was, ash. Yeah, cigarette ash. What was the. What, <laughs> it was, there ink, was a, like ink from a pen or right, some shit. Yeah. It was like so fucking awesome. Man. Wow. And he was not fucking stoked about it. I mean, I know he did it still, but you know. Yeah, it was. Yeah. I mean, we used to fucking get busy. You know For, what I mean? First tattoo I got, I was 12 funny. years old and it was taking chess pieces. And you'd melt the plastic chess piece onto paper, and then you would scrape the char the char off mm -hmm. into a little cap, and then mix toothpaste in it. Really, and that was the first tattoo I had. I was twelve years old. My cousin Whoa. did it in a trailer park. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Oh, yeah. <laughs> My dad would have stopped me, but he was in the joint at the time. So he wasn't very helpful. <laughs> He's like, hey, you're on your own. Yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's crazy shit, dude. That's pretty badass. <laughs> no, good times, man. It was good times back then. I was just thinking I was like running through a bunch of the, I was trying to like rack, you know, I don't know how much of you feel, but it's so much of that shit is a blur to me, you know, the touring and the fucking, and you've yeah, done a lot, totally. you know what I mean? Um, totally, I just, man. I, I have, yeah, I, I can remember, remember highlights, that. I highlights and then, and then low lights usually is where I, yeah. you know, yeah, the low lights, you know. I have a box full of journals that I kept from, tours yeah i haven't i haven't broken into but it's a pretty good sized box man there's probably like 20 or 30 of them in there really did you journal yeah. like every day or every night did you journal I, or i tried to you know i tried to like keep up with like daily you know things that stood out you know during the day like stupid shit happening yeah you know, what, what got you started doing that what was your like what made you think to yourself like hey I need to, to journal this stuff and document what I've gone through and what, like, what was your thought process and inspiration to just even start doing that, man? I mean, it, that, that's a long process to continue to do every day and stay committed to. Yeah. Um, it was something that I started doing when I was like, I think I was still in high school. I was like, you know, 15 or 16, just like writing shit down, you know? I don't know what kind of got me turned on to it, but it was just like, it's cool to like, just write shit down and, you know, a couple of days later and read it and be like, yeah. what the fuck was I thinking? You know, <laughs> like, yeah. or, yeah. you know, like, well, that was kind of cool or <clears throat> shit that was fucked up. Or just like, you know, to get shit out of your fucking head, you know? Yeah. Really, that's, that's kind of like what, what it was for me, what it still really is, but. Yeah. I, I remember really journal so much now, but like, yeah, I still try to write every day for mm -hmm. like 10 minutes you know just to fucking exercise my brain a little bit yeah yeah you know? it's a good move because I, I i remember obviously like getting the van you know henry rollins was like i think that inspired a whole generation of punks to Definitely. have you ever read get in the van 
by mm. Henry Rollins. It's incredible. It's his it's his tour journals from being a Black Flag. Okay, and yeah. they're it's awesome. You know, it's an audio book of it. Uh, I'll it's download it. Uh, the audio version I think we listened to on the planes van on tour. Right, over. right, yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, it, it did inspire a lot of fucking people to do that shit too. You know, and Definitely. it wasn't, and yeah. I even like as much as I even thought it was a great idea, I still fucking didn't do it. You know, what I mean, like uh, John C has some shit that he'd write. You know, but it is a good idea because. You know, maybe rather than fighting with your band member, you write it down and then maybe you let it go. <laughs> it's a good way to get, yeah, to exercise yeah. some fucking demons, man, yeah, for sure. Totally. Like, On paper, you're well, fucking killing you know. everyone, you know? But Yeah. Yeah, in real life, you God can let it, it go. It. Yeah, it's a trip, man. It's it's so wild. I just, all that shit is so blurry to me at this point, you know? It's been so a it long is. time, you know? I've, how long? Oh, I mean, pre-COVID, like, uh, were you touring pretty consistently up until then? With Yeah. You, you were oh, doing a man. lot of stuff, right? Yeah, all the time, you know, like every, every year we go to Europe at least, you know, three times, mm -hmm. you know, but, uh, and then shit with planes on top of that, you know, like, right. Um, yeah, so it's pretty fucking weird, man. I haven't played a show in over two years. Oh, you haven't played oh a show my at God. all? Yeah. Wow. How are you, does that, so like, that's, that's such a big weird. change, man. Yeah. It's like, how do you deal with that? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I, my I whole know, thing man. is motorcycles. So I like to ride my Harley. So for me, when COVID is like, it was awesome. There was nobody out. I could yeah, just go ride the and there was no cars, no mm -hmm. nothing. And then yeah, I'm just yeah, isolating yeah. really. So I can go take mm -hmm. off. And, but that's my serenity. Yeah. So, you know, that's being awesome, able man. to get on stage and, and perform and do your thing. That's a big part of, of, of musicians life, man. And to not have that for two years has yeah, to be pretty just have a band taxing too, you know? Yeah, yeah. totally. No band, no band practice, no fucking, yeah, not much going on. Wow. You sure. really guys, you guys didn't jam or nothing, huh? Not really. No. Wow. That's crazy, man. How, I did, how did you a couple of times with some people, some friends of mine, but nothing sure. serious, you know? Yeah. But like, I learned a lot about myself. And, and I've talked about it a couple of times on the podcast, but in this break, right. I've never had to, I've taken it. When I quit the wrath, I was like focusing on my job and my career and my family, raising my kids. And that was like an, an opted in break of about two years and not playing music, like really not even touching the fucking guitar. Right. But it was my choice. And this pandemic where I had a band that released an album at the beginning of it was planning to do not touring really but you know planning mm -hmm. to do a lot of shit i learned a fucking lot about myself that i didn't i've never even reckoned with since i was like 16 years old like have, did you have any like time obviously we've all had time to reflect like is there anything that's changed as far as it goes you know what i mean like and your passion for it or touring or any of that shit it's fucking hard man because um like all my you know just it's just so weird to not have you know, to be at the practice space or to like, you know, get fucking my shit together. You know what I, you know what I mean? Just like, there's no deadlines really, you know, although, you know, there are, there is like a, I just put out a new woven hand record and there's right. a new get some record and there's going to be a, a new plans record too. Wow. Really? Uh, yeah. I was going to ask. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I do want, I want to talk to you about each one of those individually. That woven hand record is incredible, dude. Thanks, it's man. fucking incredible I, I it just it's that you know me it's so up my alley um i sent it over to him you know what i mean just so he could check it out but um dude i hear so and this is like you've been playing with him for a long time right but are you yeah. a major it seems like you're a major part of putting this record together yeah like yeah. i mean i'm sure you've always had input in the past right yeah uh limited input you know like right David has always been, you know, pretty much uh, at the controls for Woven Hand, you know, right? music and lyrics. Um, but I have contributed, you know, a couple of songs here and there musically, you know, mm -hmm. all lyrics are always, you know, I always like feel like, you know, with dudes like that and Garrett too, you know, like lyrics right. are just like, that's your deal, man. Yeah. That's, that's your deal. Even with Luke too, you know, like mm -hmm. those guys writes the, the shit that they write is so fucking cool. Like I couldn't, I wouldn't want to intrude on, on any of that shit. Right. So, um, but yeah, with the new woman here record, I just like had all this music and, you know, we just fucking threw it together and assembled it basically yeah. all, did, you know, really just you two. I mean, did you guys have other musicians that you use or did you guys really, cause there's so like, 
I mean, it's woven hand. It's it's fucking David. Yeah. It's his mm-hmm. voice. It's a hundred percent cohesive. It's a fucking woven hand record, but there are so many insane elements that feel like you to me. I mean, I hear the stooges. I hear some fucking joy division in that motherfucker. I hear, a, I mean, the program, cool. like, you know, the program drums and the, and the percussion and shit, like it's so all over the place. And it's such a cool, like breath of fresh air. Cause not that it was ever stale, but it's like, you knew what to expect, you know, and this one, I think right. caught me off guard. It really did. It's you know definitely I mean? different, I feel, for Woven Hand, you know? Yeah. For Woven Hand Records, it's totally fucking different. But, yeah, yeah. Um, like, about, you know, 90% of it was, like, shit that I had just kind of stored up over the years. And, you know, we decided to fucking whittle it down. And then he put his vocals on it. And, um, yeah, it's all just um, mostly me and uh and david's playing his guitar and his banjo on it you know and um some uh neil's playing based on some songs and uh dylan our friend dylan who plays he's like the new drummer for get some Mm -hmm. he plays some synth on some stuff okay and uh yeah it's all recorded here at the house really and uh yeah yeah like super super low low budget like wow running microphones through a fucking four track kind of shit you wow know, <laughs> because it has but like such you know like, you have a computer yeah. you can do anything on computers these days it's like yeah but even like the program drums and shit like you're doing all that stuff too yeah, yeah. wow fuck dude yeah i just i mean i know you as an incredible guitar player you know what i mean and, and i'm sure you're an incredible musician but it was just such a wild <laughs> i heard so much of you in this record you know from what i know you know know about you and you know, yeah. the shows you know the bands you're in i i hear so like i swear to god there's like ha- you know there's a handful of songs that sound straight up like iggy pop like stooges you know what i mean like in the yeah. background you know his voice is always his voice you know what i mean but it's yeah. fucking cool dude like it has a punk element that i i've never caught with them you know what i mean yeah totally he has a like a you know he's he kind of grew up on punk rock shit too you right know, with, like nick cave and Mm-hmm. the gun club and shit like that yeah you definitely get some bad seeps vibes from it too you know what I mean? you yeah know? yeah totally yeah and so his he like throw, throwing his guitar on shit is like he's such a fucking he's like you know like like him and like garrett have that thing where they're like they don't really do you know i don't know what i'm doing but they're like you fucking playing this amazing shit you know like fuck you yeah you know what you're doing yeah. you know what i mean yeah like, yeah totally dude yeah. you're a goddamn wizard you bastard yeah it's he's cool. like i'm an unaware wizard i don't know you yeah know? <laughs> i don't know what i'm doing you know? yeah all, yeah which is something i say all the out. time but i really mean it i have no idea what i'm doing <laughs> yeah. god damn it and my bandmates awesome. look at me it. like i'm an asshole i'm like i don't know what key is it in fuck i don't know you know what i mean <laughs> it's tuned to g does that help <laughs> yeah or whatever right? fuck. yeah it's wild man but I, I mean obviously the record came out you know I, I i would assume it's i mean i've looked through some reviews everyone's fucking you know has great reviews but are you guys planning to do shows or what's going on i don't know man it's kind of up in the air I don't it, know. it's I don't all know. up in the air yeah. no no plans and then having to push them or nothing huh yeah i don't know not that i'm aware of you know david's okay. like pretty much i don't know he might decide to play shows solo or mm. i really don't know what's going on with that guy so oh, if you if you haven't rehearsed and you haven't done all this stuff how did you put all this together just uh, by sending it back and forth or put all the music together you mean yeah well we did it like it kind of came all together be- right, right before the pandemic uh, started, okay. You know? okay yeah, we, yeah. we had been mixing it and then the pandemic happened and we we're like fuck and we mixed it like remotely it was so fucking weird yeah yeah you know but um yeah we had like been working on it all all the way up to that point to you know like all through the summer of i guess 2019 and then um we did some touring in, in there planes did a tour at the end of the year and then, mm-hmm. um yeah we've been mixing it all through this the that winter into the springtime and then march came along and fucking everything was wrecked everything so it was a conscious decision Good to push show. the release off for a while yeah it right? was like yeah. we can't what's the point of putting a record out right when nothing's open anyway you can't you couldn't get a record made right definitely couldn't fucking tour yeah and so um yeah this is weird yeah sit on that we we're sitting on that record and to get some record too like the same kind of deal like we right. just finished fixing it and then the pandemic happened 
and um yeah so fuck it yeah like yeah because we ended up race i know we ended up releasing ours because it was like the vinyl was done it was you know what i mean like we were like right and we pushed it off for a while because it all was obviously like all the george floyd pro there was a lot of other important yeah. shit going on and it was like and we felt like you know hey hey we're a bunch of white guys with beards you want to hear our shit dude <laughs> right yeah, that, <laughs> so yeah that's we, the other thing too. we it's waited like, as long as we could and then we put it out and it was like cool it's out now you know what i mean but it really does feel like it's a race like yeah. you know like no you know you're lucky to get a blurb at that point and right. then fucking yeah. the, and we're not on a label either it was you know basically a self-release i mean right. we're on a very small label but you know it was it was just such a weird vibe dude i've never you know because normally we know the deal right you fucking release it you fucking do the press, you do the tour in, you fucking yeah. tour for a year, you go back and do it again. You know, there's a cycle right. here and it's yeah. just psh, exploded. You know? Everything, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I was working at a bar at a vent in a venue, you know, so mm-hmm. all, you know, live music, fucking bars shut down, no touring, you know. Yeah. It was just so fucking weird, man. It was like, this is, I mean, it is, it's the weirdest shit ever. You know? Yeah. Do you feel like you like it's coming back? Or are you uh, still are you still feeling hopeless a little bit? Well, I'm trying not to feel so hopeless. But <laughs> I go through it daily, dude. I don't know. You know? Yeah, it's uh, you know, sometimes yeah. I can't help it, man. You know, yeah. And I fight it off and I fucking like fight that motherfucker off, man. But yeah, yeah. God damn, dude. Yeah, are they opening up there so i mean weird. john was just there i mean they're they're doing shows again right yeah the night i saw john yeah um i i got sick that night he got sick that night you know that's right came down with it uh, yeah well, right I, yeah he, i mean he's so. over here telling everyone maturity he gave him covid dude you know what i mean <laughs> i'm yeah. just kidding he's not at all <laughs> yeah, damn it. yeah hey man that was yeah. the first night i bartended <laughs> oh back, really back at the bar yeah damn so dude. it was like fuck i wanted to be back you know and yeah. sometimes it's you know i worked the other night it was super busy there was a show and it was like it kind of felt like it was normal again yeah but man and then I you really guys all got it huh did it fuck you up or did you feel Not like shit bad. for a few days yeah uh i was you know i felt like shit for a few days like three days of like feeling like shit yeah i'm sure and you're then, an you're an anti-avid vaxxer so you're probably fucking right yeah yeah <laughs> no yeah, i'm sure you got vaxxed up and all that yeah shit. we're all yeah. vaccinated totally my yeah, wife, yeah my wife just got her booster shot and oh really she still got it too man yeah it, it's getting it got everybody dude it went through as soon as uh john from uh, john stalag was down there that's yeah yeah i know about. Anyway. uh he came back fucking and he didn't give it to everyone but everyone in ventura got it at the same time like that last loop <laughs> you know what i mean and I'm and, and I, we i avoided it somehow i think i don't know how the i i i don't look you know <laughs> i i own a have. bar and i bartend every weekend and mm-hmm. i went to denver i i went to mexico i've yeah how i haven't gotten it i have no <laughs> yeah. idea i just i haven't it's like so weird man it's yeah the I've, shit. I've, I've i got vaxxed and as soon as they said there was a booster i got boosted mm-hmm. and i mean i've had people that i've like i had a partner of mine hit me up a couple of weeks ago and was going hey because i had a birthday party at my bar and there's a lot of people there and he's yeah. like hey yeah i got covid when i was at the bar with you and i'm all wait a minute I didn't get COVID. I walked up and gave you a big hug and a fucking kiss, brother. Like, yeah, so like, I, weird, we, yeah, yeah. That's you a, know? it's a cockroach gene. That's what it is. I, it is, dude. It's that's that true. white trash. It's that fucking <laughs> yes, dirty ass it. tattoo. I that's got in the trailer when I was 12. It's all the raw garlic. I that's, what it is. Yeah. that's what I, I go raw garlic. That's yeah. Fucking, that it's just kills so, COVID, dude. it's so, so <laughs> trippy, man, on how it affects everybody so differently. It really is, man. It's so fucked up yeah it's wild man so i uh when is the get is the get some record out yet or it's not out yet you guys are waiting it's not on out it? yet okay it's awesome it's right Thanks, back man. exactly where it fucking should be dude i you know what i mean i heard it i was yeah, like dude. oh yes you know what i mean it just yeah, it's it. yeah and and obviously luke's fucking on it vocally and everything's good is neil in it yeah neil's in it okay He's, you know everyone's scattered right now neil's in illinois oh okay uh, the drummer's in oakland Oh, really? Um, yeah. Luke's okay. in Denver. Yeah. He's got another band called Quits. That's really cool. Okay. Cool, man. 
Yeah, but do you guys, what are you just waiting on? Are you trying to do a release on something or what's the deal? What's going on with the Get Some record? The Get Some record is going to be put out by this label called Rad Girlfriend. (laughs) And they're they're from like, uh, from Ohio, like uh, Cincinnati area, Mm. I think. Yeah. They're in Ohio somewhere. Okay. Yeah. Cool dudes. Yeah. You're going to put it out on vinyl and everything? Yeah, hopefully vinyl, awesome. cassette, yeah. C- I don't know, CDs too, maybe. Yeah, who knows, man? Cassettes are fucking, I'm so shocked at how popular cassettes are again, but they're the only thing you can make right now. Like, really, right. you know what I mean? Like, vinyl is a nine month to year back order. Oh my God. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, it's it, <laughs> like I got crazy. a bunch of friends that l- run labels, and every one of them is like questioning what the fuck they're going to do at this point. You know what I mean? Because it's like, what are you going to, you know, what do you even, you know, do you put a record out a year from now? <laughs> you know what I mean? it's oh, it's damn. crazy man and and then with that that and one thing I've, I've heard a lot of guys talk about which is like pretty interesting conversation was like the environmental impact of vinyl alone at this point you know what i mean because i don't know yeah. if you heard about that there was a massive uh vinyl manufacturer that burnt down it's like one of three in the world oh, right burnt to the fucking ground and they're all grandfathered in before the epa Ugh. and it's so goddamn toxic to make the shit that they'll never be able to get another one going you know what i mean so i've I've been wondering like what is going to be the alternative like if vinyl goes out you know what i mean like obviously we still want lps but is there something else 3d print a gun how is it that you can't 3d print figure out how to to make a record that's not done with the toxins yeah yeah i don't know i mean seriously like you there's so much stuff you can do yeah like that's the thing that it's like it's and hopefully it comes around but these different people it's just there's not people willing to do the innovation right they're like oh yeah somebody's gonna make these albums yeah you know and then it as this happens i think that pretty soon some little kid's gonna go hey i got an idea we'll just take this machine and blend it with this machine and now i can do three thousand albums a day yeah man you you know some fucking youtuber will probably invent it seriously man right (laughs) because <laughs> it ain't gonna be us no it's definitely not gonna be me you know no i'm too busy just trying to have a good time there you, go. <laughs> you know yeah no one's looking that at you for work, engineering no, uh, answers buddy no <laughs> you yeah. know what i mean yeah what's uh have a good time though. it does man so how's fatherhood going are you fucking hanging in there how's the kids hang- how's the kid you have uh 14 14- same birthday our kids right yeah that was the yeah. birthday man was yeah good? Yeah, was, I, you know, say skating plot. We went roller skating. It was very fun. Awesome. Yeah, man. Awesome. But, you run when you roller skate? Yes, I do. This is okay, exactly right. how I roller skate. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was good, oh, man. Yeah. How, I mean, obviously, yeah. over the pandemic, Trying you've had fall. a lot of time with your kid, right? So, yeah. Totally, how's that yeah. going? Are you uh, good? Yeah. Yeah. My daughter, it, uh, she's going to be 17 next month. Yeah. No, in April, she's going to be mm. 17. That's amazing. How's that? How much fun Fucking is that? Hell. Is, is she, is she uh, you know, I, I have a 27 year old. Okay. And I remember what she was like at 17 and it was pretty tumultuous. Like she was a handful. Like there was a lot of like, you know, she went from I'm going from 17 to 18 and 18 years old. I caught her doing some shit and I was like, Hey man, this ain't cutting it. And she's like, fuck you, dad. I'm 18. I went, you lost your mind. <laughs> you take your ass, get in the car and we're going home. And she was like, all right. But yeah. it was still like, I couldn't even believe she, I actually kind of was proud of her that she stood up, you know, cause I'm a pretty yeah. big, you know, to be standing there and try. Yeah. 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 It's also a <laughs> yeah. giant teddy bear, dude. Yeah, yeah. I am. A, yeah. you know, we all yeah. know. We all have daughters. We all yeah. know how it is, dude. It's rough, man. As soon as they when they get to, like, there's a certain right. age where they just go, yeah, fuck you guys. Yeah. You know, and they come back around hopefully most of the time, but yeah. there is that that testing and that pushing and yeah. you know, and we've all gone through it, so we know what's up, you know, and you don't want them to head in that direction, but yeah, woo. yeah she's not she doesn't go uh hang out and drink under bridges like you know, like I did when I was a kid. So that's right. Cool. Yeah. That's, Kinda. that's a cool thing. Yeah. Kind of, I don't know. Yeah. Is, is, well, unless that you know she's of, just right? sitting around watching her phone all the time. And then, right, yeah. you know, I'd much rather him go out and she's do stuff. She's done some other shit, though. It's too. It's okay. Like... So then she's doing it. 
Yeah, they all yeah, put yeah. you through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every, so, there's yeah. there's no parent yeah. worth their weight that hasn't questioned their every decision. You know what I mean? They're like, what the fuck, dude? Oh, so, man. Oh, my yeah. God. It's brutal. They get so brutal. But, I mean, it's also awesome, you know? Well, and, I mean, we all learn life doing stuff. We didn't learn life because we had YouTube. We learn life because we went and had a good time underneath that bridge and and <laughs> met and met other people that we could have conversation. Now, was there some dirt bags there? Yeah. But there was also, you know, hanging out, having a good time and talking with people and yeah, smoking yeah, totally. a bowl yeah. and eating some mushrooms and, yeah, you yeah. know, really actually experiencing life instead of going, man, this mm-hmm. YouTube person over here that I've been watching all day is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I can learn how to shuffle. Yeah. I think there's, a, there's an equal amounts of that. And, you know, the, the screen shit going on, she's been, giving her friends stick and poke tattoos and oh, she wants yes. to be a <laughs> she wants to be a tattoo artist nice and uh you know she's pretty like headstrong but she's all, she's also like very social she can like talk to people so yeah she got a job at chipotle, at chipotle right now nice dude. yeah I, I, isn't I, that I, crazy I'm to see that. your kid working yeah you know what i mean it's like <laughs> and then they hilarious. like they realize it sucks and you're all i know right yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah totally. it's got to be sweet dude it's got to be the sweetest nectar you know yeah. she's like i gotta go to work dad you're all mm-hmm. it sucks yeah. doesn't it you have <laughs> yeah. to clean up that make sure you mop that floor real good yeah fucking go extra block <laughs> motherfucker get it <laughs> <laughs> so you get at least you get free chipotle though right yeah I, i'm not really you know yeah it's whatever she gets yeah, it. I, I don't, I, don't know it. I would be fucking showing up every day I'd be like what's up dude how you doing <laughs> you know I'll take one, I'll, I'll you know you, you, know you came bowls. for me right i'm gonna yeah. need that fucking brisket bowl hook right me now. up Thank i you. hooked you up for the last 17 years you can hook <laughs> me up <laughs> that's where my mind goes. right now <laughs> yeah i'm gonna push my kids into the places that i want to eat at so i can be the asshole <laughs> parent showing up every day trying to get free shit yeah totally, totally. <laughs> you know what i mean you got to get on it dude it's fucking you yeah. it sounds like you're slacking a little bit you know yeah <laughs> she was working at uh the dunkin donuts for a minute over the oh summer. lordy that's way and better so, yeah yeah so bring getting, me home a cup of coffee there. there you go yeah dude. there's yeah that dunkin coffee donuts and the donuts we're coming home for sure yeah oh for sure dude yeah yeah, I don't care if it's hot. Just bring me a cold, throw it in that little box and bring it to me cold. Right, I'll eat it up tomorrow. Yeah. But she had the experience where there's like the fucking, you know, I wanted two sugars in my coffee. And some dude comes in and, you know, throws a sugar packet at her. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like pissed off customers and shit like that. Yeah. Yeah. So that's so, pretty funny. Yeah. That's, a good, that's a good experience to have. It, it, it's a good lesson to learn, it man. It is. Yeah, you realize you know. that most of the world is full of assholes, dude, and you have to deal yeah. with them. You know what I mean? You yeah. just got to deal with it, man. They got to be dealt with. Man. Yeah, totally. Hopefully they stand up or do something. I don't know. You know what I mean? But I feel totally. you know, I've been in million, a million positions where I was like, and I'm just going to punch him. You know, I just want to punch you. But then you don't. Yeah. And you yeah. eat shit. And then you think about it for 10 years. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> but then you realize... Oh, I don't want to be like that either. You know what I mean? Right. Like, or you yeah. learn, you learn young. Cause you know, and Craig and I are very similar in a lot of ways is, mm-hmm. you know, after you punch somebody a couple of times and you lose your job because right. somebody's <laughs> being a fucking dick and he's your manager and you're like, Oh, I, I guess you don't understand how this works when you disrespect me. Let me punch you in the nose. <laughs> And he just gets smacked in the nose and then I'm jobless. I'm yeah. back to and trying to figure it out again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah man. It's totally tough. Man. It's fucking life stuff, but it's good. To, it's good to learn that shit. I think almost every human on earth should have to work in the service industry. Absolutely. At some point, I right? I mean, hundred percent, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's no totally one on right. earth that worked in the service industry that treats service people like shit, dude. And if you yeah. are, then you're a real piece of shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> There's just no way, you know? But, yeah, man. Everybody uh, needs to go through that shit. <laughs> absolutely. So I know uh, you mentioned there's going to be a new planes record coming out. Yep. And I'm going to throw it out there. I'm heartbroken, dude. You know what I mean? The, with, the, with the loss of Garrett, it's just fucking brutal. And I don't know how comfortable yeah. you are talking about it. You know what I mean? And we don't no, have to totally really. Fun. Okay. Totally yeah. We'll uh, you know, I just, it fucking is heartbreaking, dude. I just. Sure is, man. Oh, it just. It really is. Yeah. I mean, a battle with that yeah. the whole time. 
right and he, he had throat cancer right is that that's what it started as essentially yeah as an esophagus esophagus cancer yeah 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 it is fucking and i you know I, it gutted a, a whole community you know what i mean and there's so many i was so fucking shocked that i i know that you know he had it goes beyond like the music you know what i mean because you meet you meet very few people in this fucking world that really shine you know what i mean as like humans and especially him you know what i mean like and i didn't he know him a lot very of well together man yeah he really did man he was like yeah. a massive community mm-hmm. builder dude you know what i mean and for real yeah it just fucking um it yeah. broke my fucking heart dude i just i mean i can't even imagine yeah. you know what it did to you you and your community you know what i mean but yeah totally, um, man. it's uh i have you i mean obviously i'm sure it's still up and down it's still fucking raw right but have you had time to really yeah. kind of reckon with it a little bit process yeah every day man you know yeah. trying to every every day it's just so weird you know it's fucking weird shit it gets yeah weirder and weirder man <laughs> yeah know? it really does it yeah. really and he had does, a family man. and a you know what i mean uh, that's yeah. the hard part that's the hard part for me to besides what he meant to our universe you yeah. know i'm a father you're a father yeah. you know outlive you should always fucking you know oh god it's, it's fucking brutal dude yeah you know. i mean you know thinking about all the people that like i we, i wouldn't know you if right. i had never met garrett you know right um, but you know just like the the magnitude of the people that he touched you know in one way or another through music or just through hanging out you know having a beer or whatever it was you know like and on top of that, the fucking dude's a great, you know, an amazing songwriter and mm-hmm. musician, you know, to boot. Yeah. So that's like, you know, another, you know, enticing aspect of the of the guy. <clears throat> and yeah. he's just a fucking sweetheart, man. Yeah, he really was a true sweetheart. I mean, it he was, was so weird because the handful of times we met, you know what I mean? And he was always never standoffish or anything, but he's, you know he was in a different universe, you know what I mean? Like compared to what we were. And when we, when we first met, I was, you know, I didn't, I didn't know you guys that well, you know what I mean? And, but I remember like when he would fucking talk, everyone would literally like, listen, you know what I mean? Like, and he would say shit that I would, I would think was like drunk nonsense. You know what I mean? Every once in a while, you know, cause he's so poetic (laughs) in his speech, you know what I mean? Like, and even lyrically and shit, like, you know, a rereading, like, like, uh, some of the old lyrics and shit. And then like, it would hit me like a week later. And I'd be like that motherfucker, dude, you know, like that yeah. motherfucker cut me to my soul in front of me. And I didn't even realize it. You know what I mean? And it took yeah. me a week to realize what he was actually saying. Like, and in the sweetest way, like never cutting at all. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. but he would say some seriously real shit. You know, and totally. it would like it would take me like because I'm my dumb brain. You know what I mean? I'm like, a, a week later, I'd be like, what the dude? What the fuck? You know, like, and and lyrically, I just, you know, you don't meet, you never. There's so very few real, like, just fucking performers, dude. You know, like, and it wasn't fake. It was the most authentic fucking yeah. human you've ever There's seen on deal. stage. You know what I mean? Like. Yep. you know shirt open bearing his fucking heart saying some crazy shit you know lyrically and it doesn't seem to make sense but then it fucking does you know yeah it just fucking it yeah mm-hmm. real deal it it's amazing yeah it is amazing so there is some unfinished music though that's going to be coming out you're saying yeah there's a there's a record that's done okay. just finished mixing it wow um should be coming out hopefully in a few months with death wish oh cool and then <clears throat> there's probably going to be another one too after that wow because there's so many songs and then him and neil started a, a project called blunt razors that put okay. out two records also <laughs> really yeah god damn all Great why name. he's battling that shit yep fuck yep. that's crazy man yeah they, they recorded like a fucking hundred songs or some shit like, wow he went full yeah. david bowie dude yeah you know total I mean? lockdown fucking. yeah and neil's wow. getting all militant was like making garrett sing over shit you know Garrett's <clears throat> <laughs> <It was laughs> all hey dude <laughs> yeah and, and it like, had to have been a thing man 
it had to have been a struggle, something. right? You know what I mean? Like it had to have been a struggle dealing with that. The one thing that is his fucking instrument for real, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know, man. Yeah. God's a cool field. motherfucker, you know? Yep. Yeah. It's yeah. it's just so it, it fucking broke my heart. I can't wait to hear any of the news. I mean, is it did you guys do it all together? I mean, has it been in the can for a long time or how did it it was it the same kind of piece together from him and you transferred yeah back and it forth? was mainly like garrett and neil working on the shit together and they would like make demos okay and send it to mikey and i and i would just send in my you know send my parts into the home office man you know i'm like wow just write my little parts and yeah and then mikey and the three of them would get together i was just in denver the whole time you know so right that was kind of weird you know to not not be there in the room during the you know just like because it's always been kind of like a like someone has something and let's just flesh it out you know right yeah and and there's a mad there's a lot of magic that happens in those moments you know totally man. that and yeah. it's you know i mean at this point what are, you know what are you going to do just you're i'm just stoked to hear that there's more music coming out you know what i mean yeah man i'm stoked um, that it's going to be released and death wish really is doing it huh yeah that's awesome yeah. man yeah because when i saw converge uh fucking a month ago two months ago or whatever they had you know on their on the screen above them they had you know uh the yeah. plane skull and everything and it was just like it was so fucking touching dude i was like i was lucky enough to i was helping this band night demon they were playing and i was literally lucky enough to be like one of the few people that were allowed backstage dude and i just cool. like i was on the balcony and they started playing and that image came up dude and i just like i i'm like i'm like mm. crying why i'm like hearing jane doe like you know converge playing jane doe at the same time you know i was like yeah. I don't know what to do. you know i just I, it was a, it just hit, it really hit me at that time you know what i mean like uh you know yeah it just fucking you know it's crazy man i just there's some magical people in this fucking universe we're lucky to know them you know seriously yeah yeah, yeah. uh any plans on when it's coming out or we don't know what you don't know nothing yet no no dates yet it still yeah. needs to get uh, mastered and the artwork needs to come together for it. But uh, it's definitely, it's in the can. It's like 13 or 14 songs. And um, yeah, then there's another fucking like batch of songs that I think there's like a lot of shit that's like Garrett recorded the, the chorus, you know, mm. he recorded the chorus on it. And they were experimenting with like, let's make songs that have like a catchy chorus, you know, because planes never really had songs. Right. Like right. So they wanted to like write songs that have like this chorus where they're like repeating something, you know. And like, so there's Garrett's like singing like a chorus part, you know, there's a couple of songs like that. And I think the plan is to get to ask some of our friends to like sing a verse part over this. Oh, you know? OK, cool, man. Yeah. Just to get some random people, you know. Like, yeah friends from bands that we've toured with over the years or people right. that we really like you know the sound of their voice or whatnot yeah that's awesome that could man. be pretty that could be pretty cool i think yeah that's amazing i mean just the, with the technology and able to being able to do that you know what i mean and, yeah and also you get to see like you know you find out so many random people that love that fucking band and that man you know what i mean it's like yeah you know i i really didn't know there was a converged connection at all you know what i mean like Oh, you know, yeah, totally. you know, I just I I figured everyone knew and, and like it felt like anyone that started doing that shit in the 90s, like like they did, you know, all kind of knew each other, you know, at some point. But, you know, it's just the reach that had, you know, I mean, it was I, I every fucking everyone was touched by that guy, you know, in one Seriously. way or another, you know, it was, it yeah. was wild, dude. Um, But uh, did, do you know who did the mixing? Did, did you get Kurt Ballou's hands in there? Or what, is he on any of that shit for the mixing or mastering? Or uh, no, no, our friend Sanford Parker Okay. did all that shit. Yeah. He's our dude in Chicago. He did the last Plains record before that. Okay. He did a couple of the Woven Hand records as mm -hmm. well. Um, he did my old band Peralta's record. That was pretty cool. Yeah, fuck yeah, man. That's badass, dude. Yeah, he's a cool dude yeah is um was there did you guys get to do any type of memorial or anything yet not yet man we've been like you know somebody was just asking me about that yesterday um, oh really yeah I, I want i hope there is something soon but it's like you know with the fucking this whole you know lockdown whatever the bullshit yeah. You know, yeah the virus and all that shit i think something's gonna happen within the next few months you know yeah 
we're definitely going to put the word out. There's going to be one in Denver and there's going to be one in Peoria as well. Right. You know? Is that where so, he was in Peoria? He was back in Peoria, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's yep. where he grew up. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Dude, it'd be cool to see like a fucking yearly festival, dude. Or, you know what I mean? Like something yeah. like, you know, cause like it's something that needs to continue to happen. You know, I don't think it's worth I mean, it's just my two cents, right? I mean, yeah, I, I really like uh, there's that Patrice O'Neill is a very famous comedian that died, you know what I mean, uh, a, a long fucking time ago. And the, uh, this massive group of comedians, Bill Burr and a bunch of other guys, they do a yearly fucking festival, a comedy festival in his name, and they donate all the money to the fucking uh, Patrice O'Neill's family. You know what I mean? Cool. Like, and like yeah. something like that, like would be fucking rad. You know what I mean? Because that would be rad. Yeah. You know, because it would totally fucking, I mean, you know, I think to honor, and it's just my two cents, you know, I, I, I was thinking yeah. about it the other day, I was like, because I haven't heard anything about anything, but man, like a yearly fast, or even like every couple of years or something, you know what I mean? Like do something, totally. you yeah. know what I mean? Um, For sure. It'd be yeah, fucking be, rad, you know, and you could do it yeah. even traveling or fucking, you know what I mean? Like there's so yeah. many fucking options, you know what I mean? And totally. I'm sure you're thinking about all this stuff, but you know. Yeah, I mean. I don't know. Not really, but yeah, I mean, that's a great <laughs> yeah, idea. Yeah. 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 I don't um, know. No, I haven't really thought about, you know, shit like that. So any, much. anything you can do to, to get together in any way, shape or form, the sooner you guys can do it, even if it's just a few of you guys to just get together and go through that process together is really important, man. Right. You know, yeah. I, I've had some serious stuff happen to me in the last couple of years and, and I'm, I'm, I'm trying to deal with this stuff. And one of the things that I've realized lately is like, I want to do something, but it's like, it's so far past this point. It's like, I don't want to go back into those feelings. You know what I mean? Like you deal with this stuff. Yeah. There's a reason why all these religions are like, Hey, let's get this done you know, mm -hmm. because it's, you want to process and get moving. And, and right now we're in this place where we have to fucking drag it on, man. And I know, and I'm going to like, I lost my wife almost two years ago and I mm -hmm. want to do something, but I'm also at the point of going like, I, you know, I could stand around and cry in the middle of a bunch of people. And now I don't necessarily want to deal right. with all those emotions right. anymore, you know? So you know, the, the sooner, even if it's just a little crew of people and you can get your friends and, and, and do a little, you know, sesh together and just hang out and, yeah. and, and memorialize and, and process together, man, I, I, you know, and I'm not to mm -hmm. preach or anything, but anything you can do to get that going, even if it's on a small scale, man, I highly recommend it. You know, yeah. it, it's, you know, I mean, we're at the point with most of this stuff where we kind of all understand we're, we're either going to catch it or we're not let's 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 process let's deal with this stuff right. you know yeah no totally yeah I hear yeah it. it's it's crazy i mean is there any was there anything that you you know he would have wanted like did you guys get to talk about anything before any i mean not that i i don't want to pry too hard but no i never really know, did. like like uh yeah it was all just kind of <clears throat> there was no like serious planning you know right it kind of just happened kind of Fast, yeah you know? yeah yeah it was unplanned for sure um yeah. so no man there's no like post whatever plans yeah you know? yeah um, i just I, I think it'd be killer to see something you know what i mean like yeah because it just you know that dude's fucking life deserves to live on you know what i mean Definitely. like you know with how many people he touched and yeah you know the music is so important and i also i think by finishing those records and getting those out that's a massive fucking homage you know what i mean to you know it, your guys's work you know what i mean as a fucking band it's it's just yeah it's, it's important to me you know what i mean and and i just you know i'm just a guy fucking asking dumb questions you know but <laughs> i just you know i just fucking well, i, I love you know i love to see that because ventura's always you know my wife went through cancer you know eight years ago and i was fucking shocked at how much people stood up and we're willing to help and you know you know it, we always had such a great community here you know and yeah and, yeah. and then totally. to see when that happened it was it, the can't anything with cancer fucking makes me almost cry hearing about it period you know what i mean like because i didn't have yeah. it i went i just helped my wife get through it and it fucking and tears mom. me up even thinking about it you know what i mean like 
yeah. it hits me in a weird fucking way. And it, and it, I don't even think I processed any of what we went through for a year after the fact, dude. You know what I mean? Because it was so like fucking. Let's just get through it. You know. Right. Yeah. Um, but when it's when it hits you, you know, like it hit you, um, and it's you're not expecting it, and you're you're left with fucking. You're just left questioning everything. I'm sure. You know. Oh yeah. yeah. For me, so you like you were saying it was March, right? And so I lost my wife the beginning of April with no, so it was literally, there was no chance to process and deal with anything, you know, and, and it just makes it, you know, I'm literally like, is everything, cause here, everything's pretty light right now in Ventura. And actually when I was in Denver, it was awesome, man. I had such a good time in Denver. I'll go back there as soon as I get a chance. Yeah. I, I, I ran, went to some, some bar that was underground kind of and then i walked to the back and went up these stairs and there was a bunch of people doing like a jazz jam session you know it <laughs> oh was, really oh yeah like what it. bar was it do you remember no hell no dude we we, we went out to eat metal at like 12 30 what's that it sounds like a metal lock maybe it could have been i hey man i honestly it was you, you, uh, you might, it could be the metal lark. You walk down the stairs and the bar is right there when you walk in the door. Yeah. And then we walked to the back and then walked upstairs and you walked out and it was like this big patio area. Yeah. And I, I it was, you know, yeah. it was, inc- it was really, really fun. There's a little pizza place next door, you know, that had some slices and, yeah. you know, it was really, and nobody had masks yeah everybody was sitting there hanging out together yeah you know and it was a really good time and all that stuff lightening up has been it's, yeah it's kind of, you know i'm an extrovert so for me i need these people you know i need that right? stuff you know my yeah. dad's an introvert he fucking loves the pandemic i don't have to talk to none of these cocksuckers i'm good just right? leave me alone yeah. you know but yeah to be able to get out there and, and denver was so much fucking oh, fun dude. man it was, it, I, cool. I, I literally, I will definitely be heading back. Yeah. You know, are you Hell still yeah. happy there in Denver? Yeah. I love Denver. You do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Cause you always seem like you, you really do like the fucking place. It's one of the only, only, you know, when you, when you tour as much as you did, you know, and, and, and whatever, as much as I did, there's only a couple places that you see those like parallels with where you're from. And Denver right. is literally, the top of the heap for me like i felt that vibe in richmond virginia a couple random places you know what i mean but denver for me is literally like if if i could move anywhere right now without and i have a really good friend matt elkins that moved out there a few years ago and he fucking loves it he's like dude come out and i'm like i can't it was so cool (laughs) i can't dude i gotta you know i'd be a moron to leave my job right now you know what i mean like i'm just so secure in what i got going on but it's it is it is like as soon as we met you guys, it was like this literal, like, oh, like there's no bullshit. Like there's no, like my town's cooler or there was no vibe of any, you know what I mean? It was like immediate, right. like we understand each other. Like you guys are from the mountains. We're from the beach. We're all assholes. Let's fucking party. You know what I mean? It yeah. was like totally rad. You know, <laughs> like totally. And, and it's the only, really the only town I've ever felt that in, you know, or the yeah. only uh, town I've ever, yeah that i've ever when, really felt when, that uh, vibe in and you'll you'll know the street we we i can't remember where we went but we were <laughs> on our way back into town heading into downtown and as we were going through and and you'll know the street it was like it was like punk bar metal bar whichever punk slash whatever it was bar dispensary like smoke shop, massage parlor, <laughs> bar, dispensary, like the whole street yeah. was just like a bar and a dispensary and then a vintage antique shop or whatever it was. It looked like, I'm like, man, why weren't we hanging out here? Right. <laughs> you know, this looks like yeah, this the is place that we should be, be hanging yeah. out, you know, get hammered, get stoned, get yeah. a massage yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and listen to music, man. I mean, yeah. it was, it was, I could not believe how many yeah. bar, right. Yeah. Four no, stores, it's a party ass bar, town, dude. four stores, it's, yeah, it's, bar, you know, it's really expanded like crazy too. Man. Yeah. How is the oh, weed insane. shit like chain? I, I obviously I know weed. like they were one of the first people to legalize weed. Is mushrooms legal there now? I think they're 
decriminalized decriminalized okay yeah right how is that i mean yeah. i heard i mean you always hear shit it's like they're getting checks back from the government fucking you know what i mean like i don't know what's going on over there is it like has it ruined weed for you what's what's that you know because you guys were always california weed was no joke and then you know in, the, in those early 2000s you'd go to denver and you're like oh these motherfuckers got some weed dude yeah. you know so we'd yeah. always reconnect with you and then yeah. keep going on tour you know but yeah. has it fucking ruined weed for you yet with all the everything going on there? It's weird for sure, man. I you know I used to sell weed for a long time. Right. And I know. Then, uh-huh. Yeah. And then it became legal. Yeah. Ruins the game a little bit. It, but then yeah. all my, you know, my clients fucking dried up, man. You know? Yeah. That's yeah, what I, I was growing up. weed. Yeah. Uh, when I, I, I was growing, I had a massive fucking spread at my house right when they be all became legal here and it fucking i went i was growing like nice outdoor shit and it was like 1700 a pound and then yeah. by the time it was legalized i was like getting rid of fucking pounds for 500 bucks i was like here oh take the shit <laughs> like and it was within like six months because it just become legal and then you had to jump through so many goddamn hoops to get so to crazy. sell to the dispensaries you know what i mean Ugh. um but yeah <laughs> has it yeah, helped so the weird. town though like do you feel like the legalization of all that has really made a difference or no uh, is I it mean, big is it big pharma coming in fucking doing it i don't know man somebody's making a lot of money for sure yeah um, i don't was, i i don't i don't know i don't know that that's true what the somebody's making a lot of money there might be but I'm around a lot of people that are pretty heavy growers and it seems like it's a giant pain in the ass. Oh yeah. But it I is. mean, those, those, you, you know, those dispensaries I mean, I mean, are yeah. killing people it, making though. money are the, the taxes that are being collected. Yes. It. yes. That's a shitload of money. Right. Yeah. And I don't like that's going somewhere. It's, you don't yeah. feel like it's coming back to you guys at all. No, I don't think so. I don't think they're no. doing anything to fix the city or improve it other than make, you know, room for more condos right place. right yeah no school because that was the whole that. deal like they were going to put it into schools education yeah. all that shit no you've seen that yeah that, right dude. there's like yeah. a there's like a brand new city pool down the street maybe like within the tent last 10 years they built mm-hmm. and it was closed the last two years right like just shut you know and it's all like there's plants growing out of the fucking thing it's like a <laughs> fucking swamp down there man. <laughs> so i'm like it's gonna cost them like a million dollars to fix it up you know? right if right. they do you know who knows yeah they'll like probably bulldoze it and put some more condos in right do you uh do you okay. participate in the mushrooms um i haven't in a little while but you should, yeah i, I it, do it it, it uh in mushrooms. It, i don't know yeah. about there but here it's a game changer like yeah. it's not like it used to be like when you wanted to do mushrooms you had to go find them oh yeah and it was difficult it was like pain, it was yeah. a job and you could find them once or twice a year right like right, right. when the harvest time comes right after right. springtime and then yeah. you're calling your Season people up. in oregon going hey man can i please get some before you guys run out right. and now i call like a dude a, the dead and, show comes through town and stuff. oh right. dude the dead and i hated it but i would go there uh, just to go yeah. to like hey guys you, you know but yeah man now i can get these mushroom chocolate bars oh yeah and i can get oh, them wow. whenever i fucking want yeah, and you can really? microdose oh, and yeah. they are man wow. it is it is awesome man. yeah <laughs> i mean well, after after my wife passed they tried putting me on all kinds of antidepressants and all kinds of stuff and i'm like I, i'm not into this man and yeah. then this homie of mine's like hey man here here's three chocolate bars take two little pieces <laughs> off the chocolate bar in the morning and then do this and then like set it up for me wow. that was the best i mean it got me through the first three or four months of just being like trying not to be depressed and it was mm-hmm. oh my god i'm so grateful like it because i'm not trying to do antidepressants right. they don't do nothing yeah. for That's me you know I, I mean, yeah the first time yeah. i looked down and fucking little willie and the wonder nuts wasn't getting up i'm like no i'm not taking these <laughs> antidepressants y'all go fuck yourself yeah if the you boners know? go away you start really oh, fucking dude, you start tripping shit, hard yeah. you know, <laughs> you know I mean? yeah but then man it, it made all the difference yeah. in the world that's so funny guys are like my dick's not working 
something has to change yeah what the fuck yeah. yes, <laughs> this exactly. is not gonna work uh-uh. dude. That, that's, that's not tolerable <laughs> no, not no. at all dude. Uh-uh. yeah no and way. i'm also not taking viagra for it either fuck this nope. you know? <laughs> i'll take mushrooms <laughs> yep i'll smoke meth fuck it you know what i mean <laughs> i heard it gives you fucking rock whatever hard it takes bones. yeah whatever it takes yeah. heroin fuck let's go smoke some dog medicine <laughs> that's right man fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> i'll take that fucking horse tranquilizer dude i don't give a fuck and ivermectin right in my fucking vein just whack (laughs) just hit that shit get get all that fucking joe rogan (laughs) shit right now dude you know what i mean (laughs) well fuck man uh thanks so much for coming on man i don't want to take too much of your time i'm sure you're fucking you got shit going on it's so good to see your face man it is man (laughs) and i i want to see you in real life yeah hey good to meet you too man yeah man yeah hopefully my my friend of mine, her best friend lives out in Denver and she's cool as shit. So we'll be heading back out there before yeah, too long. Up, so yeah, I will, man, for Definitely. sure. I'd love to see you guys in touch, you know, listen to you guys play sometime, man. I, you know, like I said, yeah, man, that, too, man. that one street that we went down, do you know, okay, there's a bar called the, was it something, the duck, the, the dirty duck. A little dive bar off it, man. <laughs> Chuck's all I don't know. What the fuck cheapest you're drinks, about. <laughs> cheapest drinks in Denver was what the sign said. And uh man, it was such a cool spot. I you're mean, going it to was, spots in Denver, Chuck's never. Are you sure you were in Denver, dude? Yeah, yeah. It's called the Dirty dude, Duck, bro. Cheapest drinks in Denver. Out, anymore, yeah, so yeah. I'm yeah. Sure, I'm but, sure there's a I ton mean, of cool places. Dude, yeah. it was an old dirty dive bar, <laughs> it was full of old dirty drunks but it was the coolest yeah. spot drinks were like four dollars for a cocktail that's cool. and it was a little dirty dive yeah. bar but everybody in there when we walked in you know in california you kind of in, in denver i'm sure you can go to places the same thing where you get that questionable look when you walk in the door yeah oh yeah and they there was nothing man the nothing, bartender yeah. was like hey sit here these people moved over mm-hmm. like it was just cool. such a cool yeah. spot that's man funny, and man. it just made me want to go explore yeah. more of that you know but There's really a lot of cool spots man yeah jay was actually in boulder he didn't even actually make it to denver so that's that's worried. possible yeah. <laughs> that's probably that's gonna happen too He's, he thought yeah. he was in denver the whole time <laughs> yeah yeah snorting boulder yeah, yeah there you go. <laughs> anyway uh any, no shows on the horizon no nothing coming up nothing coming you got up got nothing man. dude get I'm on it man now. we need you bro yeah. get the game trying, god damn it i'm trying get the real game. hard man i know like, open, well, a, open up the garage together. throw up a gopro yeah. do facebook live yeah get everybody Something. on board yeah i'm horrible at the internet shit technology yeah. you did you did good today man hey i am Thanks, too man. man that's why i hang out with this dude. yeah my wife said all this stuff no did she yeah. god yeah. bless her man god bless her <laughs> me yeah. too brother yeah. me too if it wasn't for him i'm not I your wife on god damn it <laughs> uh, you got titties <laughs> no anyway uh, i love you man thanks so much for coming too, on dude. great to I'll meet you dude. brother i'll talk to you good to meet you too man all right later